recording. Okay, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're going to read a lot of scriptures today. Brother Branham said if you read a scripture and you don't see Brother Branham in it, and you don't see Jesus Christ in it, you better go back because you missed something. So we read a lot of scriptures, that's what we're going to do. So I hope you all had a good uh, Fourth of July week. <clears throat> the one lady climbed the Statue of Liberty. And a lot of people that went to see the, the Statue of Liberty couldn't see it because they turned them back. So this world is, so we better get on the umbrella of God's Word. Amen. And uh, we went to the nursing home and we thought we didn't do anything. So when we came out and sh started shaking the, the people's hands, one lady said, you got, thank you for coming, you really, Bless me with God's word. That's the word she used. Like, like she knows about the message. That's the way we talk. So, like I say, you think you think you go somewhere and uh, you know you have a little service. Could be one person. Mm -hmm. So, right. so it made me right. feel a little better because we thought we were wrong. We didn't do anything, you know. Uh, Morning, kids. <laughs> So I want to continue my thought on mountains, so I'll try to finish it up, I need to start something new. But uh, we're in the south, they name everything mountain, you know, Snow Mountain, Blue Ridge Mountain. Actually over here in Jefferson there's a, there's a street named uh, Hog Mountain Road. <laughs> <laughs> They say we're, we're climbing a mountain. See, God, God is uh, drawing us up. We're not being pushed by by anyone. So it's our daily walk, you know. See, we're not all on the same level. Everybody's in that different level, you know. But we are saved by His grace and foreknowledge. So. If you're a son or daughter of God, no matter which road you decide to take, he'll, he'll get you there. Okay? You got your Bible ready? Let's go to Exodus chapter 3, and we're going to read 1 through 15. Well, I got you guys beat. I got it all right here. Exodus 3, chapter 3, and we'll start with verse 1 through 15. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, a priest, a median. So that meant he was a priest. So whatever Moses wanted to do, he would not push him or do him, he let him do whatever, whatever Moses wanted to do. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Aaron. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses <coughs> said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight. Why? The bush is not burning. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him, God called him, out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not hither, put off thy shoes from my feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of the Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry, because the reason of their test message for I know their sorrows. And I come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to, to bring them up out of the land, into a good land, and Lord, 
into a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, Amorites, and all them Hittites. <laughs> now therefore, behold, the cry that children of Israel is, is come unto me. I have also seen the oppression where the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee into Pharaoh, that thou may bring forth my people out of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring for the children, for it, for the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and I shall. This shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought for the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God upon this mountain. We should serve God upon this mountain, the mountain that we're climbing. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and I say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus, sh thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent, sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. Like I said before, Moses' father-in-law was a priest. He did not push Moses into whatever, you know. It, it's your daily walk, you and God. Okay. Exodus 4, 18. And Moses went on and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they be ye alive, and Jethro said unto Moses, Go in peace. Amen. Let's go to uh, Exodus uh, 19, 3 and 4. Chapter 19, 3 and 4. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus thou shalt say unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and I brought you unto myself. Let's go to Psalms uh, 103, but uh, I'm, I might need some help on this one. Here. <laughs> 103, let's start with verse 1 to 22, and then uh, I'll read the first one, you guys read the second one. Okay. Psalms 103. I need a lot of help. I'm, not, I'm no no brother Wade or anybody else. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and then all within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget my all His benefits. <coughs> who forgave all thy iniquities and who healed all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life destruction, who granted thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made all his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. And the Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and mercy. He will not always shy, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. 
For as the heaven is high above the earth, so is great his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like uh, <coughs> as the Father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. For he knows our friend, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the fields, so he flourished. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto his children's children. To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rule over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that accept the strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his words. Bless ye the Lord, O ye hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I wrote a little paper one time about eagles. I don't know if anybody got a paper this year. So I'm going to talk to everybody. You didn't? You've been here a hundred years this year. Say, <laughs> so, the eagle builds its nest 10,000 feet high on the cleft of the rock. What is the rock? Christ, right? Yeah. Which is the type of Christian believer they have and they understand that, that Jesus Christ is God in flesh and upon this rock, Jesus built his church. The eyesight of the eagle is eight times more powerful than man. The eagle is covered with two set of eyelids. One set is for flight and the other one is used to fly directly into the sun, but not as you in, as so in. In Palestine, there are 40 types of eagles and for centuries the eagle has been recognized by many nations, kingdoms, and empires as the king of birth. The eagle is a sign of freedom, strength, immortality, and authority. Man has reproduced an image of the eagle on coins, emblems, seals, and flags. The eagle is a heavenly bird. So what are we? We're eagles. We're not chickens. We'll get to the chicken <laughs> It can uh, fly and see part of the another uh, uh, bird. The chicken is a bird just as the eagle is, but is a, is a nerve-bound creature. It can fluff and fly, but it can scarcely get its feet off the ground. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Brother Bram said a uh, chicken is a denominational denomination chicken. Mm -hmm. So one day a farmer out west put an eagle's egg in which, with a chicken, which it hatched. It was one of the funniest looking things you ever saw. The chickens all picked on him because they said he was an odd fellow. When the eagle is born, it's one of the ugliest birds you've ever seen until they reach about the 11 months. And they are one of the most beautiful birds you have ever seen. Say so one day the mother eagle flew over the barn, barnyard, and she, she flew by her <coughs> shadow swept over the barnyard. She looked down and she saw her own and screamed at him. When she did, the little fellow turned his head and began to look upward. When we looked, when we looked up, she screamed at him. Come up here, you're not a chicken, you're not in a denomination, you don't belong down there, you're mine. The legal the little eagle wonder wonder what to do because that is what he wanted also. She called, just make the first jump and flap your wings, make the first jump, flap his wings and found that he wasn't earthbound any longer. He was then on the barnyard. Folks, she said, Some come up higher come up higher in the world. 
Give me another jump and I'll carry you on my wings. As an eagle soared for nest, flutter over her young, spread abroad her wings, taking them bare onto them on her wings. Deuteronomy 32, 11. It said, if you're an eagle, you have to eat eagle's food, which is in the federal word of God. For, for wherever the carcass is, there will the eagle be gathered together. But they they wait upon the Lord, so they do the strength, that's that song. They shall mount up with wings of the eagle, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Second Samuel two one verse one twenty three. Now Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their life and in their death they were not divided, they were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Jeremiah 4.13 Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as roaring. His horses are swifter than eagles, or unto us, or we are spoiled. But we are not spoiled. Our Father, our Heavenly Father, gives us whatever we have need of. I was telling at the nursing home that. You know, God, God is good because we wanted to sing that song, God is good. So I said, uh, yes. All the time. Huh? All the time. <laughs> so uh, I, told him, I told him about that and I said, that we, we could ask God for, for a million dollars and, and he'll say no and he's still good. He's still good because he knows what's good for us. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got all the scripture that I used. Uh, you know, you can have all the riches and lose your soul, Mark. Anyway, I use that scripture, and they kind of, they kind of got it. So, Lamentations, uh, chapter four, sixteen through nineteen. The anger of the Lord had divided them. He will no longer regard them. They respect not the persons of the priests, they favor not the elders. As for us, our eyes have yet fail for our vain help and our watching. We have watched for a nation that could not be saved. They hunt our step that we could not go in our streets or is our end is near, our days are fulfilled for our end has come. Like I said that the world is going crazy so our prosecutors are swift to the eagles of the heaven. They pursue us upon that mountain. They lay wait for us in the wilderness. Let's go to uh, Daniel 4. And uh, I'm going to need help on this one Daniel 4, let's go to 1 through 36. <coughs> you do need help. Hmm? Oh, well, thank you. I need help also. Okay, Daniel 4, we'll start at verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all the people, nations, and languages that they dwell in on the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I am in the midst of the rest of my house, and flourishing in my house. 
I saw a dream which made me afraid, and he thought upon my bed, and ambitions on my head troubled me. Therefore I made my grief to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magician, the astrologer, the Chaldean, and the soothsayers, and told their dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation. Therefore the last stand came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and who knew me the spirit of the holy gods, and before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master the magician, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in thee, and no secret, no secret trouble thee, tell me the vision of my dream that I may, I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of my head in my head. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and there The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached into heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was a heat for all. The beasts of the field had a shadow under the earth, and the fowls of heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, the watcher and the holy one came in down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves, and scatter its fruit. Let the bees get away from under it, and the fowls from the branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from the man's, and let the beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This is Matter is by the degree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high rule in the kingdom of man and give it, it to whosoever he will and set it up over in the basis of man. This is your mighty and never convincer that seed, that I have the will of the shadow, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men. And then he was named, but Balthasar was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Balthasar, let not the dream of the interpretation therefore trouble thee. Balthasar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemy. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, and whose height reached unto the heaven, and the side of the to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and then it was meat for all, under which the beast of the field dwell, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong. For thy greatness is grown, and reaches unto heaven, and thy name is to the ends of the earth. And where the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, How the tree, who, who the tree down destroyed, yet be the stump. What was talking about? Uh, mm -hmm. The roots, leave the, the roots. Yeah. Yet yeah, neither stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with dew of heaven, and let his fortune be with the beast of the field, till seven times passed over him. This is the interpretation of the king, and this is the degree of the time, which is the of the Lord. They, they, that they shall drive thee from men, and they dwell shall be with the beasts.
the field and they shall make thee to eat grass mm -hmm. as, as an ox and they shall, shall wake thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high rule in the kingdom of men and give it to whosoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave this number of degrees, Wherefore, O King, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off the, thy sins, thy righteousness, and thy iniquity, by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the King of the Israel. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the power of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have lived for the house of the kingdom of my father? Well, the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king, never ask to thee, it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And they shall drive thee from men, and as well shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the most time will of the kingdom of men, and give it to the works of every The same hour was the thing filled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as an oxen, and his body was waved with dew of heaven till his hair were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds. And at the end of the day, I looked up on my eyes to the heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised the honor of Him that liveth forever and ever, whose dominion is everlasting dominion, and His kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are recruited as nothing, and He doeth according to His will in the army of heaven, among the inhabitation of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What do thou? And at the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, and the honor of my majesty, and the glory of my power, and the Like I said, no matter what road you take, God's going to get you there. He made him eat grass and <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Thank you, I needed all the help I'm good. And the uh, message, uh, what is the attraction of the mountain? Brother Brown said that religious people, after crucifying the Prince of Life and everything, still do you see the promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the attraction. Who is this? What mean is this? What's the matter with them people? Oh my, it's the same today. We'll bypass a lot of this to bring it to this hour. The same thing is today. The same thing is taking place. The same quest question says, what's all that racket? Look up and down the street. Cars from Michigan, Florida, California. This morning, when I was right out, or right afternoon, we were going down the street, and I was looking at license on cars. That's where I thought of the sticks. What mean is this? Just that it said, where the carcass is, there is where the eagles will gather together. Right here. I said to my wife, honey, you remember last night when I had to say goodbye to everything that was dear to me on earth and going to the field to start something that God has said to do? You sang that song, What is the Attraction on the Mountain? Oh, no, no, it says, oh, they come from the east and west, they come from the land of God. That's what attraction is, the predestined seed of God who can't do nothing else but follow it means more than life to us. Take our lives, but don't take what is the attraction. God, as usual, fulfilling His word, His 
fulfilled the word on Zechariah again, the prophet Zechariah. When I read the verse, ninth verse, the Holy Ghost, when Jesus entered his temple, riding or entered to Jerusalem, riding on a little white donkey, the prophets to see what's fulfilled, what Zechariah said. Here it is. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king is coming to thee. He is just and heaven salvation. Lowly ride upon an ass and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. That's what the attraction was at Jerusalem, the religious headquarters. Now we see a last day happening. Let's just turn a few pages on Zechariah and see what he said about it. Let's turn it over then for the last day. That was the Middle Age. Let's turn now to the last days and turn over to Zechariah 14th chapter and begin with the fourth verse. And listen, and we're going to read down a portion of the scripture about nine verses, four to nine. Listen close. And it's prophesying of his coming, the last day. So listen close now. This is, thus said the Lord, to the scripture, Zechariah 14, remember Zechariah 9, what it said, and they didn't recognize it now, what is it today, Zechariah 14, speaking of his coming. And his speech shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives again, which is before Jerusalem on the east, on the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west, and there shall be a very great valley half of the mountains shall be toward shall be moved toward the north and half toward the south you shall flee to the valley of the mountain for the valley of the mountain shall reach from ashara yeah you shall flee like you flee in the days of the earthquake in the days of uzziah the king of judah another earthquake Splitting upon the earth. If you want to follow the scripture here, notice in, the, in this fifth verse, it uh, applies that the cleaving of the Mount of Olive is due to an earthquake, and this is confirmed by the Isaiah 26, 6, 29, 6, and Revelation 16, 9, exactly what it is. The same prophet told of the first coming, seeing his second coming, noted as in the days of the earthquake, see what the earthquakes are doing, see the predictions of them. And the Lord your God shall come and all of his saints with thee, and it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear or dark, it shall be one day with one day which shall be known to the Lord not day nor night, but it shall come to pass in the evening time, it shall be light. We get all this. Uh, the magazines and newspapers and say that earthquake in California is real, so even the people in the world know it is real, you know. Uh, Ryan said he's ready. <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, they made him look bad uh, last time because he did the uh, um, Bible trivia. So he said he's not ready this time. What what king was an expert in building a waterworks? Waterworks. Waterworks. Ryan said it was going to be <laughs> Second Chronicles 32, 27-30. And Hezekiah had exceedingly much riches and an honor. He made himself treasures for silver and for gold and for precious stone and for spices and for shoes and for all manner of pleasant jewels. Storehouses also for increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls for all of his beasts and coats for flocks. Moreover, he provided his cities and possessions of flocks and herds and abundance for God had given him 
sat them very much. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gideon and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all of his works. Got it right? king after being in captivity for 37 years was released from prison and given a daily allowance of food for his lifetime. Uh, 2 Kings 25, 27-30. And it came to pass in the seventh and thirteenth year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, how do you say that? <laughs> King of uh, Judah in the twelfth month on the seventh and twentieth day of the month that Amor Mordech, King of Babylon, in, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoiachin, King of Judah, out of prison. And he spake kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the king that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments. And he did eat, he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was continually allowed given him by the king's a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. That's what we need. A little bit of color. I didn't finish for Good. Ryan, you didn't even get one. Turn off the camera.